For anyone watching on YouTube, feel free to skip ahead a minute or two. Uh, I didn't expect to be doing this stream this morning because I thought I wasn't going to get bright links and then someone lent them to me. Uh, so I'm just trying to get set up in a hurry and kind of uh, take my setup time and people joining the chat time as the same thing. Morning, Echo. Okay, good morning everyone. My name is Phil Gallagher. I run Thraben University, and today I'm going to finally, finally, finally be streaming with Mono White Death and Taxes featuring Brightling. I've already done sort of a brief deck, deck tech on this deck list previously in my sort of like post Death Rate Shaman and Pro video, uh, so I'm not going to delve into um, the deck list too much today. Here, here's the 30 second version. Remorseful Cleric seems great with all the reanimator we expect to be running around. The 24th land is good with Brightlings. Brightling is probably great in a world of miracles, so we're going to play a third one in the sideboard. Brightling is also going to be very good against Rug Delver because it can like survive a lightning bolt and race more or less whatever they've got going on. Sort of War and Peace in the sideboard is for the Mirror, which I expect to be more popular, and for Miracles as well. Otherwise, uh, since there aren't two big control decks right now, there's probably just going to be one Miracles. I don't think it's worth running Cataclysm right now, uh, hence why there's a little more variety in the sideboard, and I can find room for things like Sanctum Prelate and the Sword that I previously could not find. Uh, this, this stream is entirely due to uh, Basic Planes in the chat, aka uh, Piroka139, uh, who saw my post about looking for Brightlings so that I could stream, and graciously let me borrow them. So thank you, and let's just play some Legacy. I've got about two and a half hours, and I really want to get through a stream. Yeah, I feel like that spike is at least probably partially on me. Not that like I personally bought them out or anything, but I I hyped up that card a lot. It's it's really really good. I saw the foils were up to something absurd, like over a hundred dollars already. So what did I learn, Echo? Well, Echo, what I learned is when I know a card is good, and nobody else believes me that the card is good, I should just buy a thousand of them. Right? That's how that works? Hey, and welcome! And it's fine. I have a file, lots of things to put in. I have Karak as a disruptive land if my opponent is playing Reanimator. Uh, it looks like we might be playing against like Rug Delver, which this is a great hand against Rug Delver, like holy cow. No blind flip on the Delver. We are good at magic. Ooh. So this actually might be just uh, straight blue red Delver. Uh, 
I think I want to play my Thalia so that my opponent can't, like, brainstorm in their upkeep and flip the Delver. And then if my opponent, like, uses their entire turn to kill the Delver, then I can play Cleric and Mom on my turn, have the Cleric to trade with Delver, the Mom to Wall with the Swift, the Wall to Swift Spear. And if the Thalia doesn't die, awesome. But I play this Thalia 100% expecting that it is going to eat a bolt of some nature. Uh, it is Remorseful Cleric. It's Tormod's Crypt on a 2-1 flyer. Can I turn the moto noises down? I thought everything's muted, right? Like, this is muted. Well, this says it's muted, but we can just turn that off. Sorry about that. I don't have my speakers with me, so... Uh, I did not know that was a thing. Alright. So my life total is under a little bit of duress. I can like attack in and gain four life right here, but that doesn't do much. So I think I'm gonna flicker wisp this, kind of put up a defensive wall, and then on my next turn I can attack with Jete, playing it through whatever soft permission they could draw other than a spell pierce. Chain Lightning is a little annoying. Uh, I'm not currently playing Cavern of Souls. With, like, the more Brightlings you play, the more actual white sources you want in your deck. And if you're playing Brightling, it doesn't have a creature type overlap with anything else that is in the deck. So, like, in a matchup like Miracles, you want to put Cavern of Souls on, what is that, like, Avatar or Elemental or Shapeshifter, like, what, what, no, Changeling, question mark, what, whatever Brightling is, like, that's where you want to, alright, Chain Lightning, Target Mother of Runes. So I think I'm going to let that happen, and I just like protect my flicker wisp here, get my flicker wisp protection from blue, then it can block three damage this turn if my opponent like attacks in with the delver, and then I can just like go in and gain a bunch of life with it. Otherwise, if my opponent doesn't attack with the Delver, and they just, like, attack with these two. Yeah, I like that. Uh, 
Oh, we can't kill Storm Chaser because of the, uh, the prowess trigger. See, this, this is fine. Like, you know, I effectively gain five life by letting the mom go. All right, that's, that's not the best for me. So what happens if I crack in? If I crack in, my opponent will trade the Storm Chaser Mage for my Flicker Wisp. And I can have, and I can kill the Delver, and then have Monastery Swift Sphere versus my empty board, or I can just like play the Jitte equip and pass. But if my opponent gets a removal spell, I will just die. Essentially, well, it's it's like plus cantrips, right? So it's like brainstorm, ponder, plus four bolts, potential of more chain lightnings. I think I just have to attack. Like, I get two creatures off the board. I will have a Jitte versus empty, like, Monastery Swift Spear. There is also a chance that my opponent just, like, does not block. And they just, like, try to keep the prowess guys on board. Yeah, okay, I can see this. Uh, the deck list is below the stream. All right, so should probably just kill the Swift Spear now. So I'm effectively at 10 life. Maybe I shouldn't kill the Swift Spear. Because if I don't, like, if my opponent just, like, draws a cantrip, cantrips hits me for two, and then next turn they go, like, cantrip into spell or something like that, like the Storm Chaser Mage alone might be able to kill me if I just, like, nug the Swift Spear here. I'll pass. Just keep, keep these counters around. Yeah, and if my opponent plays a spell pre-combat, I will respond by killing the Swift Spear, so they will just go to combat. I'm currently on the life game plan. I mean, I'm effectively at 8 life, so I'm not technically dead. But I'm not in good shape. I do expect to die this turn. With one more spell, I will be dead.
So game one loss to not drawing enough creatures. Alright, so what do I want? Probably want Canonist, want Brightling, want Prelate, want Sword of War and Peace, would consider Council's Judgment, Path. Do I not want? I don't really want Crusader. I don't really want Recruiters, they're a little slow. I board out Sword of Fire and Ice when I have the third piece of equipment to bring in. I board out Revokers. I won't play the Council's Judgment. And then I'll trim one Flicker Wisp. That's awesome. This is a, an amazing vial based hand. Like, if this Aether Vial resolves, it is probably just going to be impossible to lose this game. Like, Brightling Vial plus these disruptive cards is, is insane. And Stoneforge Mystic is also there in the middle to just get, like, a Batter Skull or a Sword of War in peace. Uh, basic planes. I'm not under. Sh I'm not sure I understand your comment. What do you mean? Prelate on one is risky with the density of removal he has. Are you is, is the he there me? And you're saying that since I have six one drop removal spells, it's risky for me to play that card. Yeah, Lewis. This this hand is cheating. happening. Uh, Seven Crosses. Actually, the Medea from that story refers to a character from classical mythology of the same name, so my name refers to that. Although Fate's Day Night is an excellent show, and that was a great character in that show. Yeah, you can you can take that canonist. That's that's why I played it out. Yeah, you have another days, do you? I'm a Latin teacher, so by by training, that's my my, my jam.
Ooh, my opponent's thinking about brainstorming. You know, this could be a Thalia coming down. Uh, teacher. Um, I'm currently teaching middle and high school Latin in Roanoke, Virginia. I've taught college classes before. Um, I did uh, classical mythology for the University of Maryland for two years while I was a grad student. So we're going to get Jitse. I know my opponent has the days, so I'll play around with that. And I'm just happy jamming the equipment right here because, like, even if they have a force of will or something like that, the, like, the rest of my hand is just so, so stacked that I'm not worried. And now I'm going to put pressure on my opponent in a whole bunch of different ways in the next turn cycle. Like, I can do any, like, basically anything I want, right? Like, I can just, like, play Brightling, hold, hold up mana to protect it. I can, uh, like, go for an equip on Stoneforge. I can Violin Prelate, put it on one so that he can't just remove the Stoneforge. All right, I'm, I'm currently teaching at Randolph Bacon College, but I am uh, teaching high schoolers right now. So how do I want to do this? I think I want to cast the Sanctum Prelate. And then the Brightling, that can be a little surprise for my opponent. <clears throat> Brightling's great. Just an attack with the Delver, that's fine. Pause as opponent reads the card. Considers all the choices they've made so far in their life. And that's usually what happens when Brightling gets play. Uh, this hand isn't as good as the last one, but it's still pretty good. I have double removal spell for any creature-based start, which is awesome. I don't really have a real, like, game-winning card currently, but that's okay. Uh, seven crosses. Basically, every time Brightling resolves, I just win the game. Like, it just does that. And I... And I this is not hyperbole. When Brightling sticks, it just takes over the game. prioritize the Swords to Plowshares over the Vile for days reasons, uh, because 
If the game goes longer, I can just start like casting the these cards, but I need to worry about like immediate death. Chaser Mage is a really annoying card for my deck. Mm. Mm. We're not just gonna jam this. We are not just going to jam this. We're going to wait. We're gonna be patient. This will this will just win the game. I might play it next turn. So what does it mean if I want to play this next turn? If I want to play this next turn, I don't want to wasteland my opponent. I could just play a Flicker Wisp, but I don't really have a good target. I'd rather keep the Remorseful Cleric in my hand because I can just use it off the vial next turn. Yeah, so I guess that just means I Flicker Wisp. Uh, Remorseful Cleric mainboard is something that I conceptually like, but these are my first matches with it, uh, so I can't say anything with authority. So, like, I, I like it because I expect some amount of increase in the number of graveyard decks that are running around. I also conceptually like it because it is a generically good 2-1 body with some disruptive element that when it's not good, it's still aggressive. Like with... Alright. Yeah, it's, it's certainly better positioned than uh, I expected it to be. Okay, so my opponent still has three cards left. I probably cannot afford to not play Brightling this turn, unfortunately. Like, I would love to just put it in unconnerably the following turn, but if they just, like, rattle off three cantrips again and I take four and then I put Brightling in the next turn, I might just die to like something like two cantrips plus a bolt at my face or something like that. Um, so I think I probably need to take that risk. It's, it's unfortunate that I do, but... If I wait one more turn, the Brightling is probably too slow. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna think about this for a minute. Alright, so my opponent plays three non-burn spells. I take four, I go to eight. If they do the same thing again, I take four, I go to four. If they do like two cantrips next turn, or like the, the following turn, and then a bolt, that so would take four, then I would take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, maybe I can wait one turn. It's risky, because then if my opponent plays, like, another Storm Chaser, or a Swift Spear this turn, or a Delver that gets to flip, I'm just in trouble. Yeah, I think I have to jam. Ooh! Yeah, Thro throwing the cleric away is 100% viable. 
I don't want to like lock myself into doing it though. Cast Lightning Bolt targeting Brightling. Okay, now the question is, do they have a second Lightning Bolt? If they have a second Lightning Bolt, I just want to bounce Brightling. If they don't have a second Lightning Bolt, I just want to increase its toughness. I'm going to assume that my opponent hasn't played against Brightling, and they just expect that I'm going to bounce this. So we'll increase the toughness. Okay, Brightling only got two cards and effectively gained me six life. Not bad. I don't think I want to chump block yet. I'm gonna get a hit in. So now cantrip into a bolt can kill me. Am I prepared to chop block? I don't think so, because like if my opponent has a bolt, they just... Hmm. I, I think I need to like keep this around so that if I top deck Jitte or Sword of War and Peace, I can just win the game. Uh, the 24th land doesn't feel bad. I like the 24th land. Like, for example, had the... had the Brightling stick stuck then having all of those extra lands would have been awesome. Okay, there's the bluff. Somewhat good news. I have a graveyard hate card. Damn it. So, 
can sack Remorseful Cleric, nuke the graveyard, port this. He can attack me for two. Otherwise, if I don't, it's just Grim Lava Mancer, target Cleric. Then I Remorseful Cleric, remove the graveyard. Or it's just attacking with Storm Chaser Mage. Then I block, nuke the graveyard. In response, I get nugged for two, and then I'm dead to the Grim Lava Mancer the next turn around. This is not great. So basically, anyway, I'm probably taking two damage. At least. So let's nuke this graveyard. Well, yeah. If 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 they didn't have the the double bolt on my my brightling turn, that the game the game was just over, like un, unquestionably. All right, that's too much. We're not using the correct planes. Thunder planes is awesome. Love thunder planes. Oh, what the hell? Oh no. Oh no. How did this happen? Face of planes, you're right. I don't. No. I made it through that entire match without noticing I was playing with the wrong planes. Punt. Punt. Yeah, man, that's that's the only decision point in that match that I really question. Like, it's very close as to whether or not the turn is worth it. But I probably would have tapped just as low on following turns, so, like, the double bolt probably still would have gotten the Brightling regardless. Oh, sorry, so I don't think I said this aloud, but um, my I, based on previous data, I suspected that my opponent was a dredge player, so I kept a hand with Remorseful Cleric. draw a land. That would be sweet.
No, com Compactor D, you can see, like, this is this is Dredge stuff, but he's just got Lotus Petal to try to go as fast as humanly possible in game one at the cost of, like, some degree of consistency. him go ahead and dredge with the stinkweed imp. I can respond to anything that matters during his draw step. And they just take a draw. Yep, that was that was enough. They've had it. Okay, so I'm going to want my, my, my four extra pieces of graveyard hate, I'm going to want my cheap spot removal, and I'm probably going to want Recruiter to find Cleric. Probably don't want this sword, since my opponent's LED dredge revoker's fine. Not amazing, but fine. I still might consider cutting it, especially on the draw, where it's probably too slow. It's sort of a new configuration, so I like kind of have to like think about how I want to approach this matchup. Uh, I held I held on the damage step so that I could get rid of the wasteland or get wasteland my opponent's land so they couldn't like respond to me casting the revoker. So I wanted to get rid of the land so they couldn't do like some one mana instant shenanigan that draws them a card or whatever. And then I wanted to play the revoker to shut off the LED. Uh, Felchmaster, I have a YouTube page that has everything on it uh, that is linked on my website, and you can also find it in the Twitch replays. Uh, it should be titled something very obvious. Alright, so I'll probably decrease the amount of the Stoneforge package that I have. I could probably trim a Flicker Wisp or two. Brightling's probably medium. I mean, honest, honestly, most of the, the non-hate cards are pretty medium in this matchup. So he's going to get 20 creatures, which I don't love. That's a little low. I don't love Cleric, especially on the draw. Like, the, like, this, this stuff here doesn't really matter as much. It's my two drops and one drops that have the most impact. So this is, this is fine. Brightling plus three mana breaks bridges for whatever that's worth. That's a good point. 
Alright, I have a graveyard hate piece, so I will keep. Yeah, maybe that means I'm supposed to keep the Brightling in. It probably does. It probably actually means I'm also supposed to board in the additional Brightling. That wasn't something I'd considered. That was good, XJ Cloud. Good thought. That was just float of black mana for no reason. Okay. So if you increase Brightling's power three times, that would decrease its toughness by three, killing it, and so it can kill itself to get rid of bridges. Alright, on the off chance that my opponent only has one dredger and it is Stinkweed Imp and they Brick, I'm going to go ahead and remo remove the Putrid Imp right here. one dredger, at least currently. <laughs> wow, Brightling really does everything. Yeah, like, it keeps doing things that I, I haven't considered. Like, I never considered, like, it killing itself as a perk. Okay, so they're down to just a thug now. Alright. Well, let's see what you got. Ooh. Ooh. Russell Cleric's pretty good. Main deckable graveyard yard hate, very good against random dredge. Uh, Cannon Fairy, we very narrowly lost to Blue Red Delver. Uh, they had double bolt for Brightling. Past data suggests that my uh, my opponent is a Merfolk player. This isn't the best hand against Merfolk, but um, I don't want to throw any hands back based on like previous data. Oh man, anti anti ether vial Merfolk. Yeah, and, like, that's amazing, XJ Cloud, right? Like, 
we get to play magic where all the random crap gets to come out of the woodwork that has been suppressed either by miracles or by the the, the death right shamans in the in the last two years. So I, I, I expect a much larger variety of decks for at least the next few months. Well then. Got a counter spoil for me, friend. Because if not... Even if they like play island into true name, I just like give Brightling protection from blue and do a ten point life swing per turn. Chalice on one, you bet. Is there a world where the cleric and flicker wisp act similar to Mangara, where the activate ability occurs and then you can file in the flicker wisp and cleric and retainer letter? No, because the cleric sacrifices itself as a part of the cost. That's the difference. No blocks, you say. Well then. Life link. Thanks for stopping by, I got shot the Bob. See you later. Let's get rid of this draw step thing. Um, let's see. Kind of want to play this Revoker. See, we, see what they have to put in with Vile. Oh, 
Don't worry, I'm aware of the mutable. I'm not going to forget that. Thinking about whether or not I would just like want to give it protection from blue right now. I'm just thinking about like dismember. If I give it protection from blue right after I attack, it can just be dismembered and then I just bounce it. If I let them block, potentially like take out a couple of these lords. But I think I just want to hit them for six this turn and then six the next turn. So I will just give it pro blue. So for anyone curious about why Brightling is good, it's basically this. <laughs> sure, you can you can echo in truth, Mother of Runes. It's a little annoying. But not that annoying. So how do I want to do this turn? I think I just want to like flicker with the chalice, play the mom, guaranteed have lethal next turn. I can attack in with the brightling and just like pump pump, or I can just like play batter skull. Every everything's good. Like, like playing Batter Skull probably wins, Flicker Wisp and Mom probably wins. Just shoving with Cleric for three turns probably wins. No, Mom's not going to get Chaliced. I'm going to Flicker Wisp the Chalice. white open so we can still bounce the brightling if necessary. Brightling, so good. Uh, the one mana Merfolk is called Mist Collar. You can sacrifice it, and if a non-token would enter the battlefield this turn and it wasn't cast, you exile it instead. Alright. So path seems good. Relic Warder is a maybe. Recruiter for Stoneforge is probably good. Brightling's awesome. 
Council's judgment, good for True Name Nemesis. Uh, I do not currently think Cavern of Souls is worth playing, mostly because Brightling is a different creature type from everything else in the deck. Alright. What don't I want? Thalia is not great. That's probably my first cut. Like, the taxation portion of its effect isn't particularly relevant, and it gets smaller than most of their merfolk as soon as there's a lord. Probably not play the Relic Order until I know that they have some equipment or other things of that ilk that I really want to get rid of. The two Revokers as tutor targets is probably enough. And then I'll just trim two cards. I'll probably keep the Clerics just because they're Flyers, and Flyers are very good here. I'll cut the Crusader. Maybe the third recruiter is ambitious and slow. So they don't want to board out any flyers. They don't want to board out stone forges. They don't want to board out brightlings. Yeah, this feels about right. Yes, cata Cataclysm is out. Uh. This is an acceptable hand. It has an answer to true name and an ether vial. It's not doing a lot of like the best things I want to be doing. Like I don't have early removal, but this is this is acceptable. This this is a hand that has the potential to become very good, even though it isn't objectively very good right now. I wonder how good Mistcaller actually is. I guess it's pretty disgusting against Reanimator. It probably, like, functions similarly to Remorseful Cleric on my end. Okay, Basic Planes, thank you, thank you very much, I really appreciate that. Um, please message me directly on Discord if you need them back, and we'll work out a time when I can get them back to you. Rat Poison, three Brightlings feels real sexy. Do I want to accept this trade before it turns into something scarier? I probably do. My opponent's resource light. This trade probably favors me. They have three cards left in hand. They don't have a lord because they didn't play one out pre-combat. Maybe I don't, because if they don't play another card, I just like jam my sword here. I'll say I'll take the one damage. That's fine. The board is standard. Ah, we ruined it. Well, friend, your card in hand was not Days, so... <laughs> mm. <laughs> what does my opponent have in hand? I see something kind of weird like Echoing Truth. That probably means I don't want to play my sword, because if I have, like, Echoing Truth, I'll go for the equip next turn, and I'll lose, like, a ton of tempo. So I'm just gonna play out another Deuter. I can play Flicker Wisp. I'll Flicker Wisp one of my lands.
and then I can have swords to plow trees up for if they play a lord. Uh, um, I think it is too early to say, oh, silver you'll add if that makes a lot of sense. Uh, I think it is too early to say whether or not um, Remorseful Cleric is actually a staple. I think it's going to be very good right now. Uh, at Senpai, it is two in the main deck, one in the sideboard currently. I want to hold Source to Plowshares up. In order to do that, this is probably a triple one drop turn. The Zaytha Rao might not do a lot in the face of Mistcaller, but I don't know how aggressively my opponent is willing to use that. Ooh, is this a pause for Force of Will? Nope. So, like, I know they have a Silver Gill Addict. They probably don't have a... another merfolk in hand, or at least they didn't last turn. Alright, so that other silver gill's gone. Okay. Yeah, I can take five on the crackback. I'm winning this race. Game to win, sword of fire, and ice. Opponent's draw also wasn't the best after their mulligan, admittedly. Yeah, so that's that's the thing about a hate card like um, Mist Collar against a deck like DNT, right? Like against Reanimator, like you know when you need to use that. Against Dredge, you you know when you need to use that. Against DNT, it's just like, well, maybe I need to use it. But, like, luckily, a card like Mistcaller isn't going to be overly important for the matchup most of the time, so if you throw away that body, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, the other duder on the field was Remorseful Cleric, which is Tormod's Crypt on a 2 1 flyer for 2 mana. Alright, folks, I'm going to take 30 seconds and run to the restroom, and then we'll go into round 4.
All right. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Phil Gallagher. I run Thraven University. Today we are streaming with Mono White Death Attacks featuring Brightling. And wouldn't you know it, Brightling is total bros. Uh, this is kind of an average hand, but I have some early plays. I have it's like some mana denial, disruption against a deck like Reanimator, gen generic uh, disruption against combo decks. We'll see where this goes. This is not a great hand against something like Delver. He says, as he probably gets paired against Delver. I'm just going to port my opponent rather than play this Revoker. I probably have more land drops than my opponent. Uh, the list is below the stream, so if you want to check it out, it is there. Uh, I'll give you a quick visual, though. Uh, essentially, it's a lot of the same stuff as before. The new stuff is Brightling and Remorseful Cleric as two ofs in the main deck, as well as a Brightling in the sideboard. Do I just want to port again? Kind of just want to port again. And then the following turn, I can, like, Cleric plus a Revoker. It's possible that my opponent is just like some random control deck. So a lot of like Mirror Crusader and Sarah Avenger type cards got cut to uh, find room for Cleric. I'm just going to pour again. I just don't really feel like I'm in any hurry here. I can play a Flicker Wisp and Port. That's pretty good. Let's do that. I will regret this immediately if my opponent has Stifle. Which I didn't think about until I already did it. Yeah, kill, killing form. D&T is getting closer and closer to a homogenized deck where, like, you know, Four or five years ago, you might have 15 cards different at random from another DNT list, and that's just becoming less and less and less true. some options for this turn. I'll probably just play both the Cleric and the Flicker Wisp. Otherwise it's play Revoker and Cleric. But I think I just want to like trade one of my flyers for Delver.
No, no, I, I, I don't think homogenization is bad. Ooh, a spell snare. Remember? Okay. Um, at least on Moto, Brightling will certainly come down. Uh, the paper price probably isn't coming down very much, if at all. Wastelanding so that my random revoker here doesn't get hard cast force of will if that is my opponent's last card. Uh, I borrowed them from uh, Piroko. I, I could not find them. I found some on Goat Bots this morning and then. Uh, the bot crashed when I tried to confirm my order. I'm gonna hold this revoker back in case the Delver doesn't flip. Because if the Delver doesn't flip and continues not to flip, the clock changes. I'm also not really in a position where I'm realistically racing. Let's not draw a GSA or a Sword of Fire and Ice here. Flips, I die. I guess I'll just port here. I don't think I'm really going to have outs. I probably need to like recruit her into something that matters. Recruiter into Flipper Wisp or something like that. All right, now I'm just super dead. I can like stone for it to get Batter Skull, cast Batter Skull, but then the Delver just kills me. So, what's good? Rest in peace is stellar. Path to exile is stellar. Brightling is great. Council's judgment is worth consideration, but might not make the cut. What did I just see? Do the cards on Magic Online now have a new back? Oh, that's weird. Uh... One Revoker main is probably pushing it too far. The card's very important for uh, some matchups like uh, the Mirror, for example, where it's just one of your most important tools. All right. Recruiter's slow. We can cut that. Revoker basically does nothing. We can cut that. Then things are kind of tight. So keeping that in mind, I probably won't play Council's Judgment as additional removal. 
my opponent shows me a couple of true names, I'll change my mind. And then I just need to, like, shave one card. Probably just a Flicker Wisp. Yeah, like, what, what day is it? I, I didn't stream two days ago because I couldn't find Bright Lens. And I almost didn't stream this morning because I couldn't find them as well. Um, somebody passed along a tweet to me that basically said th that Watsi had messed up something with the... Uh, like treasure chest distribution rates or something like that. So some of the cards weren't dropping properly, which is why like there are just like literal no bright links running around right now. This would be an awesome spell snare for my opponent. How greedy is it to just, like, double wasteland my opponent? <laughs> it's pretty greedy. But that doesn't mean I don't like it. It's probably much safer to just, like, play a Stoneforge around a daze and wasteland once. Uh, Piroko139, which is why there's that nice little thank you below the stream there. My opponent has another land, and then this play is, is not the best. And if they have like a bunch of like dazes and stuff in their hand, I'd be turning those back on. So I'm not going to get greedy. possible that I'm not supposed to just like wasteland that land there, but I think I'm fine with doing so. Because I think my opponent is going to think that I'm just gonna like use my turn to put in the Jitte, so they might not actually remove the stone board if they have something like a bolt. Never mind. Alright, so what is my plan now? I have to decide whether or not I want to, like, continue to disrupt my opponent's mana, or whether I just want to go towards playing this Batter Skull. I have a lot of time, and I have all the lands I possibly want to dump this Batter Skull in play, so it's probably just correct to, like, bolt this bulk, port this down, so that they can't play anything. But just porting this down and holding up the wasteland is fine as well. So, like, I can play around another Tarmogoyf by porting. I think I want to move towards casting this Batter Skull, so I think I'm just going to port. And I'm going to port down the Trop, since most of their th many of their threats are green. Oh 
cleric wouldn't be that great, right? It just turned Tarmogoyf into a 2-3. to three. It only nukes one graveyard, so I'd only be getting rid of instant, because creature and land would still remain in my graveyard. Well, really, like, any any creature would be pretty great, because I just, like, I want something that can act as the bait, but if I don't draw a creature, I probably just have to slam the Batter Skull and play it into a daze. Alright. What does this mean for me? I can play Batter Skull, and then my opponent probably only attacks with one Goyf to hold one back. Then I can play Thalia and have a super strong Mana Denial plan going. Can I play Thalia this turn in any way and play Batter Skull next turn and expect that to be good? Probably not. Yeah, I, I, I know I still need to slam. I just wanted to, like, think it through for a minute. And the, un the unfortunate thing about this is that a daze is going to just destroy me. Uh, Swords to Plowshares or another spell would be awesome. Alright, and we're dead. That happens. That's okay, like, Rug, Rug Delver is, is a great matchup. We, we lost it that time. It's fine. Like, we, we had two pieces of equipment answered. Say la vie. Yeah, so, like... If, if I go and play things the other way around, where I go and, like, I play that Thalia first and just try to lock down mana, I'm just, like, so, so dead to something like a Bolt, right? Or, like, another creature can be rough. Or the, the removal spell's rough. And the Daze can still get me on the next turn because, like, if my if my Thalia is still around, because, like, I'll have to pay six mana for it, so the days can still eat the Batter Skull, so, like, I, I have to just jam. It's, it's a non-decision point. So good morning everyone, my name is Phil Gallagher, I run Thraven University. Today we are streaming with Mono White, Death and, Taches, Death, blah, 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 Death and Taxes featuring Brightling, and Brightling has been absolutely amazing and stellar, uh, super happy with, uh, with the card.
Uh, Remorseful Cleric has also been pretty good. We got to showcase its power very well in a matchup versus Dredge. Uh, yeah, JPA, I, I agree. That was a card that I did not talk about at all during like my my own personal breakdown of like how I thought the format was going to change. Um, but like after after just like being on the wrong side of the table from that, like it just seems like a smart card to be playing. I I thought it was going to be spell pierce that was going to be awesome, and I still think that card's probably going to be very good, but like snare hitting, like Snapcasters and such for miracles, the relevant two drops in DNT, a lot of the reanimation spells of the reanimator deck, the Tarmogoyfs that might be a new new threat in Rug. Uh, it just seems like a great card to be on. Oh man, we're up to six months now. Starstreak, thank you very much for your continued support. I hope you're enjoying these shenanigans. I'm having a lot of fun. Alright, well, I'm going to keep this hand. Uh, my opponent has played Delver in the past, but like past results don't mean a lot right now. People are, are changing and experimenting. Let's see what... Uh, Ooh, Death Shadow Delver. I don't have anything to do with my mana this turn other than play the Stoneforge. Do I care if my Stoneforge gets countered? Not particularly. Like, I'll probably get to hard cast this Batter Skull range, the Brightling will come down off the Bile in a couple of turns, I have, like, Recruiter for, like, a Thalia or Equivalent next turn, or, like, Recruiter for the Cleric to trade with the Delver. So I think given that information, I'm just gonna jam this. Rewarded. Do I want Jete or do I want Sword? I think I want Jete. Ooh. So there's probably like a whole bunch of like Gurmags in here as well. That's good information to know. Um, I have lunch at noon. I need to be changed and over to the dining hall by then, so I'll probably stream until about 11.45. Or whenever I feel like I'm at a safe stopping point. It's a Gurmag Angler. Uh, 
All right, how do I want to do this? I probably just want to get a Mirren Crusader to wall Gurmag Angler. Although then I don't have anything that answers the Delver, really. It's also a question of whether or not I actually want to play this Thalia, because if I play the Thalia, I'm not threatening, like, Jitte Equip next turn, and I get further away from Hardcast Batter Skull. I could just get another Stone Forge. Just, like, Recruiter of the Guard, get a Stone Forge, plan on just chomping with Recruiter of the Guard on Gurmag Angler, taking three this turn, then letting all the rest of my cards take over the game. Yeah, I could play Jitte this turn, but it's not, like, super efficient. I think I like getting another Stone Forge. I won't be taxing my opponent, but they're kind of resource light anyway. Play Jitte and Caracas and Violet and Thalia. Yeah. Could. But I, I, I sort of just, like, get a Stone Forge, effectively gain 5 life with this Recruiter, then have this up to 3 for Brightling. And Brightling is going to beat the ever-living snot out of this stuff. I think Recruiter of the Guard for Stoneforge is just going to like make the Equipment Angle and the Brightling Angle both terrifying for my opponent. The, the threat of this batter skull coming in that I haven't shown my opponent, but they must like deduce that I have, uh, is just absolutely terrifying. So we're in my upkeep. Brightling does not have flying written anywhere on that card. Oh, you're talking about Garmic Angler. Yeah, you're thinking of Tombstalker. Another land's pretty cool. What did I want to do? So many options. I think I'll just cast Thalia. Fatal push on Stoneforge now. Okay. Oh, uh, they were. I guess they didn't think I actually had the Batter Skull. 
just since I fetched the other two. And they wanted, like, the tempo blowout. Alright. So they have force as well. Oh no, they don't have Force of Will. They have Thoughts card as their last card, so they need to mill that away and get some real card. How big is that? That is a 1-1. One, one. I haven't figured out what this what I'm doing this turn, but it is going to be disgusting. The death the death shadow is gonna get pretty big. But that doesn't matter too much. I probably just like take this opportunity to move the batter skull to the brightling. It turns it into a seven seven. It can't be be killed by what's on the ground here. I gain seven life. On my turn, I get to like flicker wisp blink one delver trade with the other delver and then just gain like stupid infinite amounts with brightling and then put the sword on it as well. It's a little greedy, yeah. No, double block can't kill with the fetch because I have Flicker Wisp. Okay, that's true. to block this. I don't think I want to block that. Another Gurmag Angler?
So I can attack with this in as a 7-7. Seven, seven. It has to be blocked. Pay two mana, Swords the Delver. Alright, do this. I can go Jitse equip. That's poor. That just eats double block here. If I attack in and they double block with Anglers, can't pump the toughness up enough. But if they, if they double lock, I just like Swords to Plowshares and get a huge blowout. So I think I just attack it and see what happens. Uh, but JD, I, I do, like, to some extent need to play around the fact that, like, they had a card in hand, right? to gain two more life, or do I just want to play my Jete? So this is a 6-6 six, six right now. If I gain seven, I'm going to go up to 14. I can probably safely gain some life. Do I care about push? My opponent draws push, they push my Brightling, but then I just re-equip the Batter Skull to Thalia. No, I probably don't just tap out. I will gain one more life here, though. up a Caracas activation and one Brightling activation. A Dismember. It's not really good against either of my cards currently. Uh, they, they, they don't have 14 on board with the push. Is Brightling good, guys? Is, is Brightling a good magic card? <laughs> I'm so excited to see this stream. Just want to watch people die to Brightlings. Alright, so... I want these paths. Rest in peace is probably good enough. Gurmag Angler is annoying. Brightling's probably good. 
Prelate and counsel's judge. No. Prelate and counsel's judgment make the maybe pile. I, I mean, rest in peace is sort of in the maybe pile, but it's probably coming in. Yeah, that was Brightling with Batterskull. Alright, so Revokers aren't good. Those are coming out. This probably won't be a recruiter matchup. Recruiter's kind of slow. Probably won't bring in the prelate. Do I want Council's Judgment more than any of this other stuff? Council's Judgment is mana intensive. If I don't play the Council's Judgment, I'd trim a Flicker Wisp, and that would be that. Uh, I am down to two Path to Exile from three. I, you, you still need to play more removal spells in, in the sideboard. You're still going to run into Delver decks, you're still going to run into Infect decks, like the removal spells are still good against like Merit Lodge and Reanimator. You, you still need some. It's also possible that on the draw I'm not supposed to try and fight the graveyard. But let's try this. It's a very good hand. It doesn't have removal, but like we have a nasty vile curve. Reflecting more, I also probably should have considered cutting this card. Uh, JP, I, I really like that comment. I, I agree with you. Chat loves Brightling. That's what the chat loves. Oh, shit. God, I hope this isn't that Death Shadows list that I saw that has like four fucking Bitter Blossoms in the board. <laughs> Oh, that complicates things. Do I want to play that second vial? Or do I just want to jam this Thalia? So if I jam this vial, then this turn I go Mom, next turn I play Thalia, and then maybe hard cast Cleric, and then I only have Flicker Wisp left in hand. Maybe I don't need the second vial. And just like jam Thalia before they can just cast a whole bunch of cantrips. This is going to be a tricky decision point. Because if I just play the second vial, it will make a bunch of my future top decks better, but I'll be pretty far behind on tempo if my opponent plays another non bitter blossom threat. Yeah, uh, Council Judgment is now coming in for game three, yes. I'm gonna play this Thalia. Super punished. Well, that's, that's checked, at least. Uh, Dr. Bill sent me a tweet. Uh, 
no, JPA, I think that is 100% something that you need to consider. Like, there's real risk versus reward properties to consider there. I mean, generally, I think Rip is a fine card in the matchup because, like, Gurmag Anglers are really annoying. But now that I'm seeing that my opponent has this Bitter Blossom tech, that might not actually be true. Alright, what am I doing with this Flicker Wisp? Probably just blinking a Fairy Rogue. I don't want to blink the bitter block, blink the bitter blossom. I don't think because I like if I just leave it in play, my opponent loses a life, and then I can blink the token that's there, and I end up with two two fairy rogues, but they're down one life. Whereas if I just like blink the bitter blossom, they still have two fairy rogues, but they don't didn't lose that other life. But the Flicker Wisp probably isn't happening this turn. That's going to be something that happens later. Marin Crusader is going to come in and wall the Gurmag Angler forever. And then I just have to work on beating these tokens, which should be pretty easy. I also might just go on the aggro plan. Of just, like, jam this Marin Crusader down my opponent's throat and hope they die to Bitter Blossom. Yeah, Dr. Bill's a cool dude. These are black, right? Yeah. Actually, do I just double block the angler, give this pro black, and just get the angler off the table? That's probably just better. Let's do that. That's pretty good. Yep, J I mean JPA. I'm 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 with you. Right. 
so that's a win. So game to win with equipment. Super happy to beat that Brightling, or sorry, to beat that Bitter Blossom. Uh, I'm not going to be able to finish another league, but I can probably get one to two games in. So let's let's continue jamming. So, um, li living in Roanoke, I'm very fortunate to be around a lot of like high-end players. Like, there, there's just a de decent number of pros centered around Star City, and I've, I've picked up a, a lot of things from just kind of interacting with them. And one of those things is, like, the importance of sideboarding differently play versus draw, which is something that, like, a lot of people just 100% do not consider at all. Similarly, like, up, down a game is the sort of thing that I don't think a lot of people consider in sideboarding. Alanthar, thank you very much for subscribing. Thank you for supporting my efforts, and I hope you're enjoying this stream. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of right lane content. Uh, very, very happy to be uh, able to play with this card. Uh, I'm going to keep... I don't know what DN Solver is, is trying post-ban. I know pre-ban, um, they were messing around with, I think, Turbo Depths. If that's still the case, then I have a Caracas. You would like to Thought Seize me. but t tends to correlate and is always the same thing. You know, not, not true, right? So, like, you, you can lose games on the play. All right. Two swords to plowshares down. Sorry, I just needed to think for a second about what I wanted to do with the Stone Forge. So, like, it's the it's the question of like, what am I doing for the next couple of turns? And I think the answer is that I want Batter Skull because I want to be able to hold up my Caracas until I feel safe. And I don't currently feel all that safe. Oh. Famous last words. Right, so game one win with equipment. Like it's re it's really probably a win with Caracas that I just can't directly attribute to Caracas. Alright, so I probably want Path. I probably want Relic Order for Pithing Needle. Prelate's probably acceptable. Council's Judgments are maybe playable. And these are things that I could play but probably won't. Because I'm probably going to st start by killing the entire Stoneforge Mystic package. Like, that's probably step one. Cleric's not great, but it's a flyer, so with Mom back up, it, uh, it walls Merit Lodge.
So let's assume that I don't want to play this sword and that the third brightling is a bit much. That puts me at 60. With the collective brutality, it's probably on the reanimator plan as well. I have seen hybrid lists like that, but Collective Brutality is just a generically useful card. I don't want to make an assumption like that in board what is potentially poorly. What do you want Rest in Peace for? Like, what, what card are you, you expecting there? Like, nor normo, tur normo Turbo Depths is not getting their lands back from the graveyard. They're not playing things like Loam. No, the, the, nor the normal lists don't do that. And I, and I don't want to make the assumption that my opponent is playing Reanimator, just like a Reanimator Depth deck, just based off of a Collective Brutality, when that's such a reasonable card to just play in a deck in the first place. Uh, this is an action light hand at the surface level. This has like three disruptive lands, so that can make it keepable despite the fact that I just have one business card. Ooh, no, no play from my opponent. Interesting. Um, what do I want to show them? I probably want to sandbag the Caracas for as long as possible. So I will just play a planes. Although awkwardly, if I do that, then I can't like have Caracas up and wasteland them the next turn. That's probably fine, though. No, I'm just playing regular matches of Magic. Alright, what am I doing? What am I doing? Gonna play a cleric. My opponent creates a merit lodge. Cleric plus mom walls it. Grave Titan. Neat. So many swamps. I'm just thinking about what I want to like do attack wise. I probably just want to like hold back and port my opponent. Yes, so this is. Uh, a Sunday morning, so on Sunday morning we don't have morning classes. Um, so I'm kind of like fitting in streams wherever I have the possibility of fitting them in, uh, which is a little tricky, which is why this, the stream times have been like super sporadic recently. Uh, 
Latin Academy will be going until the 15th, and then you will see an absolute ton of streaming. Do I want to like play this as a two-two? If I play this as a two-two, I can start attacking with the cleric. I think I accept that. What's Pissing Needle going to name? Pissing Needle you know, it might name Cleric, it might name Mom. If it names Mom, then I want to give this pro black right now. Could also just name Wasteland. So, like, Cleric, Mom, Wasteland, Port are all reasonable names. I think I've sandbagged a Caracas long enough where I think I just want to have it in case my opponent goes something stupid like, you know, Hex Mage and Depths in the same turn. JPA, I see your comment when things slow down a bit. And my opponent's thinking, I'll try to answer that. Alright, chat, I just I just want you all to let this let this sink in right now. How fucking sexy this is gonna be. No, no, opponent, you were supposed to let that resolve so I could get my cleric back for the stream. Bad opponent. Bad opponent. Alright, so JPA had a question. Fair blue decks are basically non-existent in my meta, except for the occasional Miracles or Stoneblade. It's mostly red prison, big mana, post Eldrazi type things, lands, DNT, and some combo decks. What do I even do in that meta, either when constructing DNT or making other deck choices? Um, so if, if your mana is full of things like red prison, big mana decks, Eldrazi post, that, that sort of stuff, then Cataclysm should 100% be in your sideboard for DNT. Like, the ability to just, like, invalidate some of that big mana stuff is super, super important. Um, and, like, if, if you're going to get, like, miracles alongside those decks, then Cataclysm is going to be really, really good. Like, it might, in your local meta, Cataclysm might be good enough where you want to, like, run three of them and then also, like, consider Flagstones. Like, 
you, you might be going deep enough in that direction where you want that to happen. Ooh, Whiskey Hughes, that's a great question. Is, is the red supply viable at all? Uh, viable 100%. I think the, the question you have to ask is, is the red splash going to be worth the weakening of your mana base for the explicit power added to your deck? And I think with Brightling in the deck now, I think the testing starting point should be mono white, because this, this card is the bee's knees. Like, as, as you all saw on stream today, this, this card is just taking over games and warping everything. So like, let's look at some of my previous red-white lists. So is this deck list going, is this deck list or something slightly adjusted for the meta going to be better than Brightling in your deck? Because you don't, like Brightling is not nearly as good in a splash mana base because when you play Brightling, you, you really want to have triple white available and like true triple white, not Cavern of Souls white because you want to be able to like cast it and then hold up a white to protect it. And like looking at this mana base, like there are these Cavern of Souls that aren't truly white. Then there are the ports, then there are the wastelands. So there are three fewer white sources in this deck. You are also more susceptible to things like opposing wastelands. So it just becomes like Brightling is a worse card in the red white deck than in the mono white deck. And I think Brightling is the place to be right now. Brightling does a lot of the same role filling that P and K did against like decks like Miracles and Checkpile, where it's just like something that you can keep returning and redeploying, and it's like super annoying to answer. So, um, currently, I do not see a strong reason to be splashing, but we have basically no picture of the the meta game right now. So, so that might be wrong. Uh, Gamer Champ, I am just finishing up, uh, so you'll be able to watch the uh, the video momentarily. Um, I need to leave. I I probably should stop here. Most of my games have finished pretty quickly, but like, I I can't. I am I am I am on on. I am working most of the day for Latin Academy, so like my my traditional work hours are like. 8 a.m. to about 10 p.m. Or, or something like that here. So like I'm currently in downtime because it's the it's the morning off, but like I, I start work at noon, so I really need to like shower and such before I go to work, like actual start my shift. So I should probably call it here in case my game goes long. Um so hold on, let me let me look at my schedule and see when my next stream is going to be. One moment, chat. We have all these like sweet binders with everything we could possibly need. All right, so what is today? Today is Sunday. Okay, so Monday is a Greek day. So I'll probably stream tomorrow morning from about 9 or 9.15 a.m. to about, you know, 11.30 or 11.45 again. And I will probably stream Tuesday night. Uh, Tuesday night is my one night off of Academy. So expect a Monday morning stream and a Tuesday night stream. Uh, a Tuesday night stream might be at something like 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. That's, a, that's an approximation. It'll... It'll depend a little bit on like what all's going on, but those are those are my plans. Um, JPA, my my contact information is pretty readily available. Um, if you'd like to get my email off of the uh, off of Thraben University's contact tab, um, that's a pretty way to get in a good way to get in touch with me. Um, if you if you have questions that I can answer quickly. Um, I, I can get to those almost immediately. If you have questions that are a little more in-depth, I'll, I'll answer them as I have time, but 
within the next 24 hours uh, pretty easily. All right, so let's say a couple of closing thoughts about this deck list based on what I have played so far. You know, I'm only six matches in with this deck list, but I feel very good about it. All right, so let's start with the main deck. One, Remorseful Cleric certainly pulled its weight today, and I'm very happy to be playing this card. In the unfair matchups, it just steals games. Like, we, we got game one against Dredge, right? We, we drew one of these, which probably would have been good enough to win, but then we got the second, and we got game one versus Dredge. That's so hard to do. So having it in the deck can really give you some, like, Miser's Wins game one versus some combo decks that are traditionally hard. Two, Brightlings is insane. I already knew this, but, like, I'm glad I got to show that off to the stream. Uh, apologies to those of you that uh, didn't have Brightling. I suspect that my big old preach about how Brightling was good in my... Uh, my uh, breakdown of the format probably contributed to that buyout, at least in some capacity, so my bad. Uh, three. This Marin Crusader as a one-of in the main deck is still probably pretty good. Like, if there's still Rug Delver running around, uh, and if people are going to be trying out things like Death Shadow Delver, then just having this as a tutor target that you can wall to help hold the ground is pretty good. Uh, like, objectively, I think Brightling is a better card than this, but I don't know that... I want to take away one of my best defensive and offensive tutor targets. So I'm, I'm happy with my creature suites here. All right, question. Uh, if you only have two Brightlings and cannot come across another for the side, what should I put there? Something like Gideon or Cataclysm would be, would be fine. Um, something that will be good against decks like Miracles or other control decks. Yeah, so, like, when I initially said, like, I played with Brightling this weekend, it was absolutely insane. People were like, eh, I don't really see it. Because, like, I didn't do particularly well at SCGCon when I played it. Like, I, I had a... I, I went, like, crazy hot during the side events, and then just, like, tanked the main events. So there wasn't any, uh... any gravitas, any, any heavity, uh, heaviness to my claims. Uh, but then... I guess, like, the second time around when I started saying it, after people have been hearing all of their friends go, this card's really good. Hey, did you see what this card did? Did you see what it did versus Ensnaring Bridge? Did you, did you watch that 10-point life swing? Did you see what happened when the batter scope got put on it? Like, the, the more those things started coming in, people realized that card was, was, was really the truth. Uh, Min, it's going very well, although I am just wrapping up this stream. I will be back tomorrow morning and Tuesday night, though. All right, let's talk about the sideboard. Um, sideboard felt good. Um, Prelate and Relic Order are probably the weakest two slots right now, but that doesn't mean they're necessarily wrong. Like these were these were the three weakest cards of the day, but that's fine. Like I I like the. The additional like random one ofs that I have that are all tutorable with either like Stoneforge or Recruiter of the Guard. Um, time will tell whether or not like I want to keep this package because these probably go together. I'm gonna I'm gonna need like more more data to, though to really determine that. All right, so. My name is Phil Gallagher. I run Thraben University. I'm going to be streaming a whole lot of Death and Taxes. I have some very big events coming up that I need to test for, um, and I want to produce a lot of content. So if you enjoy legacy content, please follow me. And if you really like what I'm doing, consider donating to my cause, subscribing, or doing something else to go and help my channel. Thank you very much uh, for watching today, and I hope you enjoyed. I'll see many of you again soon. And I owe you a bonus Nick Pit stream pretty soon. We're getting pretty close to 1,000 followers. Cheers!